how to find inner peace. It is not a different question from how to grow spiritually. How to find inner peace is not a different question from how to realize my true self. You can't find inner peace without growing spiritually. You can't find inner peace without growing in the understanding of what you truly are. So it is the same. Now, today we are going to be covering five core spiritual practices. You know, I really reflected today and I was just thinking over the past few years, where has my greatest spiritual growth come from? And I was just, because I, I was writing an email, right? And I was saying I was something about how you shouldn't follow your mental doubts. Instead, you should stick to the practice. And I found myself thinking, I'm like, what does the practice really consist of? So I wrote down on my notes, I just wanted to do an overview of five core pillars of spiritual practice, what spiritual practice really comes down to. And when we implement these five into our day-to-day -day life, right? nothing about your life actually has to change. If you just implement these five things into your daily routine, into how you approach and live life, you find inner peace. You begin to understand your true nature. You begin to grow spiritually. As I said, you can't do one or the other with, or one out without the other. They all happen together. So let's cover what these five are today. And hopefully this will help you. Even if you really implement wholeheartedly one of these, it will at least become a little better than um, what you may be feeling right now. So the first thing on our agenda today, <clears throat> the first spiritual practice we will talk about and this is really the foundation. Meditate on the self within. Be aware of being aware. What does it mean to meditate on the self within? It is to grab a hold of your sense of self because it is your sense of self which never changes throughout all of life. As your life unfolds, you will notice the entire world around you will change. As your life unfolds, you will also notice that your body will continue to change. Even your mind, thought and emotion, personality, self-image, belief systems, all of these things will change. But no matter how much change happens in your life at the level of mind, body, and world, no matter how old the body grows, no matter how many belief systems you go through, they will always be pervaded with the sense of self, which is I. Here and now, you feel the sense I. Tomorrow, when tomorrow rolls around, when the contents of this experience turn into tomorrow, you will feel the sense I. This sense of self, this sense of I, is guiding you to your true nature. It is the hint of the true inside of illusion. If we want to grow in the understanding of our true self and find inner peace, we have to start to meditate on the self. What does that mean? Learn to bring your attention away from all the things which are just seen to change and guide it towards the sense of self. So in meditation, we take our scattered attention and we bring it to the sense of self. Do it here and now, to whatever degree you feel you understand this. Meditation is the foundation because without it, your mind remains entirely scattered and you remain in illusion, in personal identity, in ego. A calm mind is so necessary for spiritual growth. It is so necessary for inner peace. How can you ever be at peace if your mind is not at ease? A restless mind is the very obstruction to your natural innate inner peace. So meditation on the self within will naturally purify your mind. 
It will purify your mind of all the restless impressions, of all misunderstandings, incorrect belief systems, which currently obscure peace. Clarity. This is the foundation of all the other four. I found in my experience that without a daily meditation practice, the other four become difficult, or if we're really talking about it, it's like nearly impossible to practice. So for my practice, and I would recommend you to do the same, I practice two meditation sessions, one in the morning, one in the evening. And I would invite you to start with 20 minutes each session. It's not that you have to increase it over time so much. You know, 20 to 30 minutes per session is a general rule. It's good. It will ground you in something deeper. It will make your discernment much clearer. It will help you grow in ways you cannot possibly conceive. It will help you navigate life's challenges with a certain clarity, with a certain calmness. You will find an easier time coming up with solutions. You will grow in the understanding of your true nature directly through this inner stillness, which we call meditation. As you begin to focus on the sense of self, you begin to grow in the understanding of its true nature rather than constantly taking the sense of self to be the body. So my friend, that is the first and in my opinion, the most important one of the spiritual practices. It is the foundation upon which we build the rest of the practices. So that is something I would invite you to start right away. Now let's get into the second practice, which is discernment between the changeless self, which is the seer, and the changeless, I mean, the changeful phenomena, which is the seen. So one of the Buddha's main teachings is that everything changes. The entire field of experience is always in a, ch in a state of constant flux. There is no stability in experience. Experience is transient by nature, impermanent. And Buddha taught us that there is no reality in the impermanent. All great sages speak of this, that there is no reality in that which is impermanent. So a key element of our spiritual practice as earnest spiritual seekers who wish to find inner peace and discover our true self, throughout our day, throughout the changefulness of our lives, we have to properly discern. And I love that word, discern. It is not like a mental talking. It is a just like a looking, a seeing, you know, a discerning. Such a beautiful word. Discern between the changeless self and the changeful phenomena, changeful experience. In this discernment, anything which is seen to change is not myself. And I am simply the changeless seer of the changeful. This is so important because right now we are in a state of identification with the impermanent. We identify ourself with changeful phenomena. That is the recipe for fear, anxiety, restlessness. If we take ourself to be changeful, we will never feel a sense of security, a sense of stable identity. You see what I mean? We identify with the changeful body, and the body is always changing. Therefore, we live in a state of fear. We identify with the changeful mind, and the mind is always changing its opinions and beliefs. Therefore, we live in a state of restlessness, always seeking to derive a sense of identity from the next thing and the next thing always in fear that that thing that we derive a sense of identity from may be taken away from us at any moment because life is uncertain. So the second spiritual practice that we do is we have to discern very clearly between what changes and what does not change. Let go of identifying with what changes and just remain as the changeless seer, the changeless self.
The good news here is you already are the changeless self. Now you just have to discern and stop identifying with the objects of change, such as the body, such as the mind, thought and emotion, right? And in doing so, you become, you become more and more established in that which is not changing, which is the same thing as peace. Peace is the absence of movement. Peace is your nature as the changeless self that you are. But in order to experience that as your unshakable, unchanging reality, you have to grow in this discernment between what you are and what you are not, between the changeless self, which is the seer, and the changeful phenomena, which is the scene. Don't identify with the scene. Discard anything that exudes change as impermanent, as unreality, as not self. So you see how the first one and the second one, the practices we're talking about, they go hand in hand, right? In the first one, we are learning to meditate. We're learning to bring the scattered mind away back inwards into itself, into the sense of self. In this, we find a greater sense of stability. We find a greater calm. From here, we are able to discern between what does not change and what changes. Therefore, ever getting uh, more and more established in who we truly are. And as I said earlier, you can't find inner peace without knowing who you truly are. The degree of peace you feel is directly proportionate to your understanding of yourself. So if your understanding of yourself is limited to, I am a body-mind with this future and past, then that will be the degree of peace you feel. Always just momentary. When things you like are in your experience, otherwise they are not. <laughs> so as we grow in the understanding of who we truly are, our changeless nature, we find to that degree inner peace. So that this discernment between the changeless and the changeful must always go on. This isn't something that you do once. This isn't even something you do 10 times. It is an ongoing discernment. You may say to yourself like, oh, I understand I'm not the changeful. But you will notice through the practicing of this that the depth to which you need to realize this is so different. We need to really mature in this understanding. Many years ago, I also thought that, okay, you know, I know, I know everything changes in life. I know I'm not, you know, the body and mind. Now, when I look back at myself, when I said those things that I know and I realized those things, I had no clue. It was like just uh, treading on the surface of reality. This discernment has to mature. We have to grow in the realization of this through observing, through discerning. So to whatever degree you have maybe already realized I'm not the changeful stuff, I'm not the body and mind. But if you still feel restless, then that understanding is not yet mature. It needs to ripen, flower. And that only happens through consistent practice. So that is another thing I will say. We're going to get to the other three right now to complete our five practices. The main thing which works all of these is consistency. Without consistency, none of these will bear fruit. Inner peace is not something you can achieve as like a quick short-term fix. Although maybe a meditation or, or whatnot will bring you instant peace and relief, that peace will be temporary because your habitual state of mind will once again kick in. So there's not going to be anything permanent, anything lasting. For lasting, unshakable inner peace and to get grounded in a deeper sense, uh, understanding of who we are, it requires of us to do consistent practice. And being on the path alone is difficult, you know. And of course, there's a lot of doubts and stuff that come up. So um, if you need help with that, join our free support group. I'll link it down here somewhere and or in the description box below. Join that group over there. We have tons of resources for you. 
you can ask each other questions. You can submit your questions to me as well. I do weekly Q and A's in there, like a Q and A video. I think you'll find it helpful. Join for completely free. So those are the first two practices, okay? But consistency applies to all of them. And the best part is though, you only have to do your very best. You're not going to be perfect at any of these practices, but you just have to keep doing your best. As long as you keep doing your best, you will continue to grow. Even if you can keep doing your best and you keep failing, you're very intent to move forward in this direction and the attention that you're applying to this and the effort that you're applying to this will make you grow. Life opens its doors to anybody who genuinely tries at something. The only reason maybe you haven't experienced spiritual growth before or you are restless is that you haven't really truly tried or perhaps you haven't had proper instruction or guidance before or you did have proper instruction or guidance and you just didn't have the devotion to those practices to be consistent. Whatever it may be, just know that today is a new day. Today is a, this is a new moment. So let's move on to number three. <clears throat> Total acceptance of what is. Let what comes come and let what goes go. Never be in conflict with the contents of the present moment. Be willing to experience whatever experience may come your way. This is where we start to get into a little subtle territory, right? Because as a person, we are so full of attachments and resistances, so full of what I want and so full of what I don't want. And we are so invested in these ideas. Again, one of the main teachings of the Buddha is that he said, suffering is born due to attachment and aversion. Attachment to the things that you want, aversion to the things that you don't want. If you want to find inner peace, you have to become, in a way, non-attached. Not attached or detached. This isn't a fake mental detachment. This is through your own discernment. And that's why I, that's why I listed the number two before number three. Because only through discerning does this non-attachment flower. This non-attachment where you start to see that everything is impermanent, therefore there is no use in attaching, in resisting. You start to notice through your own discernment that when I attach or resist, when I crave or resist or fear, I only bring pain to myself. You know, we don't know this. That's why we continue to indulge in it. We want to be free from our fear, but we don't take a deep look at our fear. If we did, we would understand its roots and then let go of those things that cause fear. What causes fear? Attachment, aversion, craving, resistance. You have to like, on the spiritual path, you have to become like an empty vessel, an empty spaciousness in which all experience can flow. Anything that wants to come in can come, and anything that wants to go can go. This is very difficult for people because they have a very strong idea of what they want their life to be. And they are unwilling to surrender to life's plan. I don't want to get ahead of myself because that's going to be the number four um, spiritual practice. But you see, you have to become open to whatever may come your way. Instead of trying to resist the possibility of something and constantly being so attached to a particular possibility that must happen in this particular amount of time, you have to become, you have to release the grip over life a little bit. Let what comes come, let what goes go. And whatever is here in this present moment, never resist against. It will only lead to pain, restlessness and more ignorance. So how do we practice acceptance of what is? Through non-judgment, through non-reaction, observing without judgment, letting things be as they are in this moment. This doesn't mean that you never try to take action or you don't do anything to better your circumstances. No, you can do those things. You can act. 
but it must be from a place of acceptance of what is in this moment. You have to accept things the way they are right now. And you have to accept the possibility that anything may happen in the future. You have to understand that the future is uncertain. Uncertainty equals future. Uncertainty is infinite possibility. And that infinite possibility includes what you desire to happen. It also includes what you really fear may happen. We simply have to become open that anything may happen and that when anything does happen, it will happen and then it will pass and I will be able to deal with it. Life will give me the strength and intelligence that is needed to deal with it. If you live in this way, you just sort of become an open, empty vessel. Make it a habit to never close yourself off. Never be in conflict with what is. Even if an unpleasant situation has sur surfaced for you, make it a habit to never be in conflict with it. Deal with it. Experience it. Move forward and solve it to whatever degree in whichever pace that life demands. But never be in conflict with it. Even your problems, stop viewing them as your problems. And then you grow. And then you become that empty, open spaciousness in which all experience is unfolding. The awareness in which all experience is coming and going. For you are the changeless self, which is always unaffected, no matter what happens. No matter what takes place. This is so crucial. I've seen many people who meditate for years and years, but in their personal life, they're so attached and so invested in what must happen. And then they still never find peace. They don't grow spiritually because they just, they're, they're so invested in what must happen, what their life must look like. You can have an idea and a plan for what your life must look like, but you have to ultimately totally be open to your life's plan from God or life itself. You think that if by letting go like this and accepting, you're letting go of control, but actually this is real control. You step into like a true harmony, grace, fulfillment, inner peace. So observe for yourself that if you remain in attachment and aversion, there's no inner peace for you. And self-realization, you can forget about. Acceptance is what opens the gates for self-discovery, for wisdom, for inner peace. So this brings us to the fourth thing and sort of like uh, an attachment to the number three. <clears throat> surrender to God. If you don't like the word God, surrender to life. Do the work you feel you are here to do without being attached to the fruits of your labor. Live in total trust of the unfoldment of your destiny. So surrender is acceptance of this moment. But the reason I made this its own practice is because, you know, we have a, like, we, we do our own work and we have an idea of like what we want from our work. We're constantly expecting fruits of our labor. It's like the teaching in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna, you have the right to work and you should do the work that is your dharma, right? You have a unique theme in this life. Maybe you're a doctor, maybe you're, I don't know, you have an online business, or maybe you work in a movie theater. It could be anything, right? Whatever your lot is in this life, whatever life had whatever role life has placed you in and of course that role also changes as your life goes on but whatever role you are playing right now play that role do your work without attachment to the fruits of your labor so again you can have a trajectory for where you want your life to go and you can work towards that but as you work towards that completely be surrendered to god be surrendered to the unfoldment of your destiny Surrender is a state of total grace. Surrender equals peace. 
there's a quote by Ramana Maharshi. He says something along the lines of, whatever is destined to happen will happen. Try as much as you want to stop, stop it, it will still happen. And whatever is destined not to happen will not happen for you. Try as much as you want to make it happen, it will still not happen. So there is a divine, unique destiny to what you call this personal life. We feel we are the doers of this destiny. And from the personal perspective, that is a little true. But in the grand scheme of things, it's all just happening by itself. You don't have to accept that. You can observe that for yourself. And you know that's another video topic itself. You have to start to surrender to this destiny. And you may feel like, oh my God, once again, I'm letting go of control. And you may feel scared about that. But actually, your greatest personal benefit and prosperity also lies in your true destiny, in the unfoldment of your unique dharma or purpose. So that is my invitation to you. This has to be a constant ongoing practice in your life because you will see the mind trying to take control, being attached to control, which also then brings it into the negation of the third practice, which was acceptance. When it constantly tries to control and has such a strong grip over life, it is always miserable. It is always in resistance, never in acceptance. So surrender and acceptance go hand in hand. Work at your life. Do good work. Work to create well-being in your life. You know, you're personally you're like designed to create well-being in your life because you have a love of self. You love yourself and you want well-being for yourself. But you have to understand that the self in me is the self in you. The self is the same self in all bodies. And there's a unique destiny of all bodies that is unfolding. Surrender to that destiny. Unf accept its unfoldment in this moment, in this moment, in this moment. There lies your personal greatest happiness and peace and prosperity also. And self-realization. When you're no longer resisting and clinging, when you are in a state of acceptance and surrender, you start to dissolve all your karma. You cease to create more and more new karma. All these mental impressions start to become emptied out and you start to awaken to your true self, your true nature. How beautiful. So once again, let's just do a quick recap. We did the first practice was meditate on the self within. Number two, discern between the changeless self and the changeful phenomena. Three, total acceptance of what is, never be in conflict with the present moment. And four, surrender to God. Do the, do the work that you are here to do without being attached to the fruits of your labor. Okay, so now let's get into the last practice. Self-observation and authenticity. Be truthful and honest and strive to do what you feel is the right thing to do, always. Always seek to follow and act on your higher nature instead of your lower tendencies and impulses. So self-observation, you have to do throughout the unfoldment of your life, through all the ups and downs, through all personal situations. And you see, this is what's beautiful about the spiritual path. The spiritual path is not different from your personal life. Personal life is your spiritual path. Personal life is the arena where you implement spiritual practices. The personal life, as it's unfolding for you, is all the stuff that you need to experience in order to practice these things and grow in this understanding and to outgrow your limitations and become free from the, the karma that you have accumulated. It is, that's exactly what your experience is arising to unfold to you, to help you with. So you don't need to go seek spiritual progress somewhere else. It's happening in front of you. It's giving you all the opportunities you need through difficult situations, which you can currently are considering to be your enemy, but they're actually not your enemy. They are your the very blessings you've been asking God for, the opportunities. You see, but God's not just going to hand you spiritual progress like this. He's going to hand you opportunities. And these opportunities, you have to then act in devotion to these principles. 
all these spiritual practices are like your way to God or your way to self. The more you devote yourself to these practices, rather than remaining devoted to your conditioning, your conditioned impulses and tendencies, your belief systems, you see, then you grow. So we have to observe ourselves, you know, constantly resisting, reacting, judging life. We have to observe egoic motives within ourselves, constantly trying to um, secure our selfish motives, constantly trying to gain, trying to prove our, our worth, gain approval of others. These things through self-observation we have to let go of. The power to let go of them only comes through self-observation and an increasing awareness of them. Whatever you observe, you transcend identification with. And whatever you transcend that identification with, you gain the capacity to just let go. So you have to find within yourself, through self-observation, your most authentic expression. You find that through being always truthful, honest, doing what you feel most naturally inclined to, like even the work in your life. Start to follow your interest. What is it that you feel passionate about, you feel interested in? What do you feel is like your work in this world, your talent? It may not be clear to you, but it only becomes clear to you little by little as you take steps towards it. Find your authentic expression through self-observation. Through self-observation, find what is you and what is not you personally you see because even authenticity and personal personhood brings you a greater understanding of who you are beyond personhood and you know the first four practices will help with authenticity themselves you as you grow in meditation as you grow in acceptance surrender discernment between the changeless self and the changeful experience what naturally surfaces from that is your authentic expression. You see, in surrender, what naturally surfaces is your authentic expression of what this person is supposed to be and do in this world. So self-observation is so crucial. Authenticity is so crucial. Throughout the unfoldment of your life, you will keep noticing yourself wanting to act on your lower instincts, like anger, fear, resistance, Attachment, resentment, greed. These are lower tendencies rooted in personal identity. Instead of acting on these through self-observation, you have to start to act on your higher nature tendencies, which are more rooted in your universal identity, your true identity. Things such as generosity, caring, loving, selflessly acting, forgiveness, openness, acceptance, honesty, integrity, honor. So in, you'll notice yourself in situations it is much easier to act on your lower nature, especially when you're emotionally triggered. Only through self-observation, observation without judgment, by not being in conflict with anything in this moment and simply observing, you will gain the capacity to act on your higher nature. Even though the pull of the lower nature is so strong, you will gain the, the opportunity to act on your higher nature, and you must always act on your higher nature. Many times you will fail, and then you have to observe that whenever you act on your lower nature, it creates pain and suffering for you and others. And seeing this clearly will help you outgrow it. So you have to bring this into your life. Now, one thing I will say, you will only really be able to practice 
five, all five of these in your day-to-day -day life, if your highest goal in this life is self-realization, wisdom, You know, when I started on this path, I thought I wanted self-realization, but actually I was too invested in so many other things. I had many, many other desires and motives that I was still so invested and attached to. And that's okay if that's you right now. But gradually, if you start to walk this path, your desires will become more and more pure, more and more cleansed you will find that the only real desire that remains for you is desire to know yourself as you really are, to know the truth of how things really are. Personally, of course, you will still have goals and things you wish to do in this life, and that's fine, but they will be seen more so as like appearance, superficial, rather than ultimately important and things you derive a sense of identity from. So if you want to excel in these things, be devoted to truth. Be devoted to the spiritual path. Look at your entire personal life as your spiritual path. And then you'll be able to practice all five of these very consistently without like feeling like it is a chore, like it is work. Matter of fact, this is the greatest work you can do in your life. It's the most enjoyable. It just depends on the way you look at it. Find great benefit, passion in doing all of these practices. And you will, once you start to put them into practice and you start to see how much they are helping you to be at peace here and now, how much they are helping you grow in the understanding of your real nature and how it just creates a certain light lightheartedness in life and unconditional happiness, peacefulness, So once again, meditate on the self within. Discern between the changeless and the changeful. Surrender, I mean, uh, total acceptance of what is. Surrender to God. And self-observation and authenticity. These are what I have found to be the five core spiritual practices that you have to really integrate into your daily life. So with that said, um, if you feel like this is a lot and you need help with this, learn more about our self-inquiry school. It's different than the support group. It offers way more resources and help. There we also, you'll be able to get direct help from me. Self-inquiry school will help you integrate all of these five into your life starting today. So you can check that out down below as well. Let me know what you thought of this. You know, this is something, this is a video I wanted to make for a long time because that that thing when I when I said like return to the practice, it really got me thinking. Hey, what? Like, I want to create a video that just clearly shows you what the practice is, so you're never confused about what is it. What does it mean to return to the practice? Forget about these mental doubts and stuff, and just return to the practice. What does that mean? This is what it means. As long as you are doing these five core practices without expectation without being attached to any anything that may happen in the future, then you will naturally grow spiritually and you will begin to find inner peace now, not later, not years from now, now. I hope this video helped you. It was a pleasure being here with you today. Thank you. Talk to you soon.